Hey guys, it's Lane and Blake from Redefine Horizons. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to put together a letter-based logo for ink, uh, uh, using Inkscape. Uh, some of my Inkscape videos are, are getting a little old. They're getting a little dated, so I want to I want to try and do some new uh, new videos. Uh, Inkscape has a pretty active open source development team, and and they do a lot of good work. And, and the programs had a lot of improvements. So I'm going to do some videos on some specific features. Um, like the layer dialogue and the align and distribute dialogue and the snapping and some other things. But in this video, I just want to show you um, how you can put together what I call a letter-based logo in Inkscape. There's lots of other good videos on YouTube uh, about designing logos in Inkscape. I, I encourage you to check out the, uh, the channel uh, Logos by Nick on YouTube. He's got a lot of good Inkscape videos and uh, he shows you how to work with some logos. But... In this video, we're just going to do a simple uh, letter, what I call letter-based logo. It means it's it's the the letter lettering is the primary element of the logo, so it's a type-based or letter-based logo. Um, and I need to do a, a, a new a new logo for our uh, uh, local surveying association chapter. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So I've got um, I think this is Inkscape 1.2, uh, Inkscape 1.2 uh, up. Inkscape 1.3 is going to be out soon, um, so we'll, we'll do some videos on those new features. But this is Inkscape 1.2. I've got the dark mode set. So the first thing I want to do is go in and uh, set my page up, my page and my document up for logo design, which is not something I normally do. Normally I have it set up for letter size or 11 by 17 or 24 by 36 inch uh, uh, page size uh, with inches, my units and inches. But this is going to be for a logo, so it's a little different. So I'm going to come down here and go to Document Properties. And um, so see, you can see right here we've got all these, um, all these sizes. Uh, we want a custom size. Let's see I could, which I can do right here. Okay, and I, I, I'm in America, so I never use millimeters. Okay, <laughs> I usually use inches. But because we're doing uh, graphic design, not for print, but primarily for uh, for digital, uh, we're going to go ahead and set that to pixels. Um, and then I want I want uh, something that's square. So I'm just going to say 500 by 500 pixels for now. And we're going to change the display units uh, to pixels also. Okay. And then I'm going to create a new rectangular grid. And uh, I want my grid to be in pixels, and I want a 10 pixel by 10 pixel grid. And I like to have my major grid lines a little different color. I usually do some kind of green. Okay, so that that's basically it for the page setup. So you can see now I've got my grid. If I zoom in here, that blue grid line is a little hard to see. So let's uh, let's change that blue grid line. It just needs to be a little brighter. A little bit hard to see. Let's brighten that up a little bit. Okay, so now it's a little easier to see. Okay, and I feel like the green is just too close. Too close of a color. Oop. So let's go fix that real quick. So I feel like the green is just too close of a color. Let's go. Let's do a little bit of a red. And then uh, let's see. <clears throat> that all looks pretty good. I don't think I want to do dots. I like my lines. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. So we have this basically set up the way we want now. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Okay, and uh, I'm going to just save it to my uh, documents folder for now. And I'm going to call this CBC logo. It's a Central Valley Chapter logo. Okay. Now, one thing I like to do, another thing I like to do on my page setup is I like to just make my page white. So I'm going to just go ahead and grab a shape here. Draw it over my page. I like to make it white. Okay. And then we're going to um, go ahead and make a new layer. Okay. We're actually just going to rename this layer. We're going to call this... Uh, uh, I'm going to call it Canvas, since I don't really have a page. Okay, and then we can call this, uh, then we're going to lock that. Okay, there we go. So now we can't drag it. Okay, so that's a little better. 
All right, so I'm going to do a letter-based logo here. And back in the day, uh, drafters used to use um, kind of light blue pencil lines uh, to create a uh, 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 to space out and draft their lettering. And so we're going to we're going to try and see if we can imitate that effect. Um, so what what we want is we want a uh, we want three um, letters, so it's going to be CVC. So I'm just going to kind of rough those out, just the rough shapes. And I'm just going to use a light gray box to do that. Let me try that again. So I'm just grabbing the rectangle tool here. All right. And for some reason, that is not showing up. Oh, it could be because I've, got, I've only got a locked layer. So let's add a layer and we're going to call it uh, shapes, letters. All right, now it'll let me do it a bit. Okay, so I think, and I think I'm going to go for some kind of tall, narrow letters. Okay, so I'm going to have three letters. Now the, I'm leaving some space down here because the middle letter is actually going to be uh, a little bit uh, longer than the other letters. Okay, and you're going to see why why that is here. So the V is going to be a little bit uh, a little bit longer. And I feel like this white space gap is a little bit too large, but uh, uh, I'm going to leave it for now. So you can see our letters are going to kind of be tall and skinny. I'm okay with that. And so um, let's just go ahead. What we're going to do is we're actually going to rough out the uh, the shape of the letters. And I always like to do my logos in black and white first, or kind of grayscale. Okay, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna rough out the shape of our letters, and I think I'm gonna do some letters with some rounded corners here. So you see, I'm gonna leave some gaps there. Um, and and since we have CVC, I'm gonna go ahead and just get this first C done, and then we'll just duplicate it and move it over. Now, I, I the reason I did that is I wanna. Um, I want to leave some room here for my rounded corners. Okay, so we just, first of all, we just want to get a rounded corner um, that's kind of a 10 pixel, uh, 10 pixels by 10 pixels, a rounded corner. Okay, and so there's some different ways to do that in Inkscape, but I'm just going to do it like this. So I'm just going to do a Boolean operation here. Let's see, it's under path, and I want to. Uh, let's see, is it the intersection I want? Yep, intersection. Okay, so now I've got this cool uh, rounded corner that I can just flip around. Okay, and I can move that into place. Okay, and then uh, I've obviously got to do a little one 10, 10 pixel by 10 pixel square there. Okay, and if you know of an easier way to do what I'm doing, uh, you're welcome to put that in the comments on the YouTube video. Okay, so... We're going to go ahead, oop, I didn't get my duplicate on that one. So I'm just using Control D to duplicate. I shouldn't do that, I should use the menu. Um, now we may have to do something here. We, we probably, that's not a really good rounded corner. So we'll have to look at that. Um, and actually, you know what, to get the effect I really want, we actually need to make this longer. Right, because I'm trying to avoid sharp edges here. Okay, so now I can, uh, let me try and use the menu so I can edit, uh, oh, where's my duplicate? Edit duplicate, and then we can rotate that 90. Okay, so that's kind of the look I'm looking for. Uh, I, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to round those inside corners, we'll see. Okay, and then we can edit duplicate this. Uh, we need to flip that, or rotate it 90, okay, and then we can drop that in there, and then we can go get our, our one square, our 10 pixel by 10 pixel square here. Oop. Okay, so I'm pretty close. I'm going to come up here and select these three objects together, and duplicate them, and then we can come down here and cap this other C. And we'll pull this up. We need to pull this up. Okay, 
Okay, so then I'm going to just move this over like that. Okay, so um, that looks pretty good. I don't know that I need to round those inside corners. Hmm. You know, I'm going to show you how to do it just so you can see. I don't know if I'll keep them, though. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and draw another uh, circle that will give us kind of a, a rounded corner that's 10 pixels by 10 pixels. And this time I, I want the inside. So uh, I'm going to draw a box just like we did before, but we're going to use a different Boolean operation now. Um, so what we want... Actually, I'm going to make this smaller, guys. There we go. So what we want is we want the difference, I think. Oop. Nope. Which one do we want here? Nope, not the intersection. One of these is going to work. Nope, that's not it either. Let's try division. Yeah, no, that didn't work either. Hmm. What if we move this to the front? I don't know if that display orders matters, but it might. And then we'll try. Yeah. I'm gonna move this to the circle to the front. Let's try it. Let's try see what we get here. Alright, so that's not doing what I want. Path. So intersection didn't do it. Exclusion isn't going to do it. All right, so division did it. Okay, so what this does is it, it now it gives me a, a square that I can drop in to get a rounded corner. Okay, so I just uh, duplicated that, and we can uh, rotate it 90. And so you guys can see now I can add that rounded corner. Okay, um, and I, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I like that or not, but for now we'll keep it. All right, so I'm going to select all that, un uncheck the gray box, and I'm going to make it a group. That allows me to just easily duplicate it and move it over. Okay. That's me and Henri. It doesn't want to let me <clears throat> drop it in here where I want. All right, there we go. Okay. So we've got our, our two C's. And now we need our V. Now the reason the V is going to be longer is because we're going to we're going to shape it a little bit like it's a survey rod, um, and uh, uh, that's that's going to kind of be a little uh, special part of the logo. So that's why it's going to be a little bit longer. So let's just go ahead and create our bars here. So we're going to have two two bars here like this. Okay, and then I gotta, I have to do the part where we have the, uh, the V shape. Um, so let's see how we're gonna do that. So I think I, I want something that's like this. Oop, try that again. So I'm just using the draw straight line tool now. Let me zoom in a little bit. All right, and uh, we want a V that's roughly the same width as our other bars, so I think that looks pretty good. Now we don't have any rounded corners here, but I, I think I'm okay with that because it's it's kind of picturing a survey rod. I think that's okay. And I don't know, I may end up, uh, we may end up getting rid of these. Uh, we may end up getting rid of those rounded corners, but let's see how it looks with the rounded corner on the V. So I'm gonna duplicate those and uh, group them, make them a group, uh, rotate them 90, and then I can cap them. Now I can cap the V. All 
Okay, so um, I kind of like that. Um, I think that lo that looks okay. Now, um, I might like it better. I might like it better without without the curves, though. I'm I'm not sure. Um, so the we're, we'll see. I, I may see how it looks without the curves. So one of the other things we wanted to do though was we wanted to add kind of like the the guidelines, like if we were drafting. Okay, so to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these uh, gray squares for now. I don't think I need them. Um, actually, you know what? Let's undo that and we'll just move them to the side just in case we want to put them back. Okay, so we're just gonna move these to the side. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer now. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to make a new layer, and we're going to call this one Lines uh, Drafting Guides, is what I'm going to call it. Okay, and uh, we're going to go ahead and just draw some straight lines here. Okay, and so we're going to just, to start, we're going to oh, just overshoot these um, one, one unit, so 10 pixels on each side. Um, now that needs to be a little thicker. Let's go over to our Fill and Stroke dialog. And I'm going to say, all right, stroke paint, we'll make gray, or we're going to make black. Yeah, I, I'm going to, yeah, let's do a gray. Oop. Let's try a gray. So let's try 200, 200, 200. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to just leave it that thickness for now. I think that's okay. And I think these will end up going under the letter form when we're all done. Okay, now uh, I'm gonna uh, duplicate that, flip it 90, pull it down. We're just gonna double click to bring the node editor up. Okay. We're gonna duplicate it, move it over, move it down. And then we can just double click on this, pull the grip down. So you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. We'll duplicate this, move it down. And we'll get these, and we'll duplicate those, and we'll move them down. <clears throat> okay, now for that to... Oh, we need one more. I'm going to pull this over here like this. Okay, now, uh, to get the effect we want, uh, we want the, the drafting uh, guides to be underneath the letter forms. So to do that, we're just going to go to our layers, and we're going to move the shape layer. Oh, I just moved it inside. I want to move it above. So you can see when I do that now, but the letters kind of floating above those uh, those grids, okay, which is good. For some reason, this is too long. I don't know why. That's weird. Oh, I just didn't. Whoop! This guy, need, I didn't get it snapped quite in the right spot. Okay. Um, now those are those are a little bit faint. They might need to be a, a darker gray or maybe a different color. So we'll we'll, we'll see. But for now, I'm going to leave them that color. Okay. And what I can do now is I'm just going to um, I can duplicate all of these. Okay. So that's not going to work. So what we want to do is uh, we're just going to lock this shape that has the dark letter so that I can just copy these guidelines and move them over here to the other C. So that's the nice thing about having two two of the same letter. Okay, now we want to go ahead and do our V. So we're going to copy that over. The v is going to be a little bit simpler. Okay. Oop. Okay, now this is going to be a little bit tricky because uh, we need to match that rotation. Oh, let's see here. What I'm going to do is go to Object Rotate, because I don't want to do the trig. Sorry, Object Transform. And we're going to go to Rotate, and I'm just going to put in uh, 5 degree rotations. And we're just going to rotate this until we get it close. I think that's it. Nope, that isn't quite it. Okay, so it looks like... Okay, so it's not it's not a five degree rotation. So let's try a, let's try one degree here and see if we can get it close. All right, that might be it there. Nope, that's not it.
Okay, so that's not it either. So sometimes you have to do some some trig here. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know of a better way to do it. Actually, what we could do, let's try this. Let's draw a line on top of here like this. All right. Okay, now I want to I want to make that longer. Um I don't know of a good way to do that. Let's see here. I don't know of a good way to um, to do that. Mm hmm. Let's see. Can we convert that into a guide? Maybe. Let's see. Path. All right. So we made that a guide. Now let's see. if we can use that here. All right, so now it'll let me just snap on the grid, which is pretty cool. Okay, so that that worked out pretty good. Um, those lengths aren't gonna be exactly the same length as that, but that I, I, that's okay. I'm not gonna worry about that. So that works super good. I'm gonna duplicate that and then flip it. And now we should be able to get it. Oh, why is that not working now? Oh, because that doesn't line up. All right, yeah, so that's going to be a little tricksy too. So let's delete that. We got to kind of do the same thing over here, I think. So we'll draw a line. We'll say um, convert that to a guide. Then we can use the guide now to. Oop. Now we can use the guide to draw our stroke. Sorry guys, I'm on the wrong one here. Okay. So I like that. Looks good. Um, we probably need to we need to do that here too. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna draw our line first. And we're gonna. Um, I think that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna have those overshoot. I think I'm just gonna leave them where they're at. Whoop! All right, that is not what we want. Let's get rid of that fill. Okay, so um, that's looking pretty good. And I'm. I might be okay with the. Um, Just trying to get rid of those guides now. So you just hover over them and then delete them when they change color. Um, so I, I, I think I like that. I think it looks pretty good. Let's go back to our layers and see if we can clean this up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and turn those off and unlock my shapes because I want to make sure that my shapes are all grouped. So my V is not a group. So we want to make that V a group again. Okay, and we want to make the C a group again. Okay, so then let's go ahead and turn on our our guides. And I'm going to lock the, the letters again. Now, I, it'd be nice if the, we could get the guides to stand out a little more. So, let's see how we might do that. Let's go to uh, the stroke and let's try something a little darker. Okay, so that looks a little better. Um, I think I like that. Now, the last part I wanted to add was I just wanted to have uh, something that looked kind of like a, a cap on a survey monument here. So I'll tell you how we're going to do that. We're going to go, we're going to draw it here like this. Except I'm not on the right layer. And we should actually make a new layer, so let's do that. So we'll make a layer and we're going to call it shape, shapes monument. All right, and grab our, okay. Okay, so that's the monument. Now we're gonna make that. Uh, I'm gonna give that a, a black fill. Oop. We'll give that a solid black fill. 
Okay, and then I'm going to take away the stroke. Okay, because we want to add our, our drafting guides like we did before. So let's go to that layer. We're going to go to the drafting guides layer. And let's go ahead and draw our, our drafting guides for this. So that should go fairly quick. Okay, now let's see. Are those the same? So if you want to make something the same, you can go to the same style. You can go to Edit Copy and then Edit Paste Style. Okay, so it looks like it was the same already. You can duplicate that, bring it down, duplicate it again, bring it down here. Double click it, get the node, drag it over. Okay, and then we need, whoop. We're going to need something for the cap here. All right, almost done. Whoop. Okay, now I am going to have a problem here. Let me, uh, let me lock the shapes layer again. Oh, it is locked. Hmm, that's weird. Oh, this must not be on the right layer. Oh, shapes monument. Let's lock that. There we go. Okay, so I want to pull that down. Uh, one 10 pixel unit there. One grid unit. But you can see that that's going to run me into the edge of my logo. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do to fix that is I'm going to move all the letters and their guides up which means I have to unlock those layers. So we just we got we got squeezed a little bit on the bottom there. So I'm going to just move that up. Whoop. Oh, monuments locked too. All right. <clears throat> okay. So uh, that's about it. Uh, the only problem with this with this logo is I think you know it's going to be hard to see the the, the guides on a um, it's going to be hard to see the guides if you're if you're not a small resolution um, so that that might be one disadvantage of the way we laid this out I don't know how to really fix that except for making the the guides a lot thicker than they are um, so this is a good gray good grayscale logo here so. Um, what we can do now, we should have saved our changes a long time ago, but let's go ahead and save this and export it. Um, so I want to export the page there, and I'm going to go for 300 DPI. Okay, and we're just going to go ahead and export that. Okay, and then let's let's go ahead and see how that looks. So we'll open that image up. Okay, so there, there's what the logo looks like, uh, kind of grayscale logo. Um, now, I don't love, you can kind of see the small seams in there where we have the different sh uh, shapes. So let me show you how we can fix that. That's just kind of a, a bug in Inkscape. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to select that group, and then we're going to say object, no, is it path? Path union. Okay, and we should see when we do that, no, it's not working. So let's ungroup them. And we'll select them all. So we gotta freeze our, uh, we wanna free, or we wanna, uh, let's just turn off and lock our guides. So I'm trying to get rid of these little skinny lines you can see when you zoom in real close. So we ungrouped it, we're gonna select it, and we're gonna go path union. And I don't know if that's going to get rid of them or not. See, they're not. For some reason, they're not. They're not getting unified, which is weird. Hmm. Let's try the C. Oh, it's a group still. Let me ungroup it. Okay, so it worked really good on the C. I don't, I don't know why it didn't work on the V. 
So you can see when I do path union on the C, um, it w we lose those lines. I, yeah, I don't know why it's not working on the V. That's weird. It's not grouped. Okay, so that those two parts of the V worked. Let's try this. Nope, it did not work. Hmm. All right, well, if you're watching this video and you can figure out why that's not working, let me know on the V. All right, so let's, let's re-export. And we'll see, hopefully those lines went away on the on the C. On the letter C's. So the lines went away. You can still see them there on the V. So I gotta figure out why that's not working. But we've got our basic logo here. So that's the black and white version. Okay, and then um, you know it's pretty simple to to make this into to a color version. Um, so let's just do that real quick and then I'll end the video. So I believe I have a color scheme for this somewhere. For this organization. Let's see what we got in this file here. Alright, that's not it. Alright, let me pause the video and I'll go see if I can find my my color scheme. All right, guys, so I didn't realize I don't have a color scheme yet for our chapter. So if you pull up the chapter website, uh, it's pretty bland. It's just black and white. <laughs> so we need to add some color. So I'm going to come to Unsplash here. It's a cool site with public domain images in it. And I'm going to go to my profile here and go to collections. And I've got, uh, let's try this beautiful earth. And uh, I'm going to just... Uh, try and grab a picture that I think is going to have some good color in it and then we'll, we'll maybe use that as a template hmm this would probably be interesting let's see what else we got so you know if you if you use a landscape photo like I'm gonna do you generally get some kind of more milder earthy colors um, which is which is okay. That might give us some pop. I just want to see if something jumps out at me here. You know what? Let's try this one. So we'll download that. And then what we can do is we can jump over here and go to Adobe colors from image and Adobe's got a pretty cool little tool that we can use uh, so we'll pull this up and let's see close that and we're gonna uh, select a file so grab that image from Unsplash okay so this is a, this is a pretty wild color scheme right it's popping a little bit um, you know what, what I might do is drag this is what I like about this particular web app is you can drag this around a little bit and get some different colors um, so yeah I might try this I think I might like this so uh, let's drag that over and we'll try and add some color to our logo okay so um, let's start with our letter V here so we'll go to fill and stroke come over here to the fill I gotta select all the pieces So let's try, um, I'm going to go with this kind of light purple color. So I'm just going to put in the hex code from Adobe. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot there. Sorry, guys, down here. Here's the hex code. So B2A. Seven D nine gives us that kind of purplish color. And you can see I didn't get one leg there. Let's see if we can get that to Union. Ah, that's funny. Alright, so let's just copy this. Copy this, and then we can just paste the style. Okay, so there's that letter. And then for the C, let's go ahead. We're going to do the C's as a dark purple. A dark purple from that scheme. So we've got 592E3A. Gives us the dark purple. Okay, and then uh, let's go down here to the Mon, 
and let's go um, I'm gonna make that uh, kind of the orangish yellow let's try uh, F29C50 okay and I really uh, don't like the guides as a gray now so let's go back to um, let's go to our layers and we're gonna lock the monument and the letters and we're gonna that'll let us just select the guides I hope okay and then we're gonna go over here to the stroke on the guides and we're gonna use a, a color from our color scheme so I don't know how this is gonna work but we're gonna try the um, other yellow color here Yeah, I don't know what I think of that. I'm not 100% sure. Um, we've got another kind of color purple, but it's pretty close. Let me see if I can get a... Get a different kind of color here. Alright, I've got another color that's a it's a darker color. Let's try that. So it's uh six five four nine five five. Alright, yeah. That doesn't look as good. It's too close to those other colors. Yeah, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm in love with this color scheme. It might be just it might be a little bit too skittles for me. Um, so, uh, but anyways, that shows you guys how you can add color to your uh, to your logo. And uh, I'll probably try some different images here and, and see if I can find a color scheme I like a little better.